Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Masha and I'm a 3D artist. Today I'm going to share with you the workflow I used to create this backpack you can see on your screen. So if you're ready, let's go. The first thing in any 3D project is of course coming up with an idea. When creating an asset, especially when it's an element very related to a character or creature, a huge help could be to imagine first who is the owner of this prop. I personally am really into forest creatures right now, so I decided to create a prop for a forest dude. So before starting to design the backpack, ask yourself, who is your character or creature? How he or she lives and why is he or she traveling? In my head it was some kind of nature scientist or explorer who travels around the world and studies different types of soil and plants. Keeping this in mind, I then started to look for inspiration. For this I use websites like ArtStation and Pinterest. Something I often do is creating a board where I pin all the artworks that inspire me. Once done, I grab a sketchbook, a pencil and make a sketch. I'm not really a great 2D artist, so my sketches are pretty messy and flat, but they really help me to visualize what I want to create in a quick way. Once the sketch is ready, I finally open up Blender and start the fun. The techniques I used for creating the elements of my backpack are mainly modeling mixed with sculpting. I usually start by modeling a base mesh, so in first place I grabbed the base cube. <gasps> She's using the base cube! I know, I know, but I have a heart and I can't just delete it. Anyway, I grabbed the base cube and added a subsurf modifier to it. Then in edit mode I added a few loop cuts and started moving them around till I got a very rough backpack shape. I separated the top face to create the upper part and did the same thing. The base meshes for branches were created by extruding some vertices with a skin and a subsurf modifier on them. The same technique I used for the ropes, the wire and spider legs. The ropes I actually added in a later stage after applying the skin modifier so I could use the branches geometry to create the part of the ropes that wraps the branches. For the bedroll I duplicated the branch, removed the skin modifier, added a solidify modifier and extruded it from the side trying to follow a spiral shape. The spider body base mesh was just a sphere, but not the classic one, a quad sphere. To being able to use it, you need to activate the extra objects add-on in the properties panel. I duplicated the body sphere to create one eye, then duplicated the eye sphere in edit mode and scaled it on one side to create the pupil. Then I added a mirror modifier using the body sphere as mirror object to mirror the eye on the other side. As final touch, I squashed the body a bit in the sculpt mode using the grab brush. After I managed to give my meshes an aspect that feels like a good base for sculpting, I applied the modifiers and switched to sculpt mode. This stage I would call base sculpting because the main goal is working on proportions and improving the main shape without diving too much into details. For this stage I use a lot the classic draw brush, the grab brush and snake hook brush. This one is especially good to manipulate the branches tips. For the parts of the branches that should look like they were cut away, you can use the scrape brush. When I see that the topology isn't enough and there are visible stretches and spots with super low resolution, I use the voxel remesher tool. You can get a resolution preview for that by hitting shift R and then with ctrl R apply the remesh. Sometimes the remesh tool isn't okay since if your mesh have any kind of holes it gives you weirder results like this. In that cases you can enable the dyne topo tool that can be very useful. The options I usually set up are subdivide collapse and constant detail. For the resolution the easiest way for me is to sample a base value from the mesh. 
and then starting from that value change it according to my needs. Time Topper might slow down your computer a lot sometimes, so if you see that it's not working properly and you can't sculpt smoothly while it's active, you can try to remesh the area with the simplify tool and then disable Dine Topo and get back to sculpting. Once I feel like all the basic shapes are done and I'm ready to add small details, I remesh the elements by using the quad remesher tool. This tool can create meshes with quad-based topology and preserve the shape quite well. You can find it in Object Data Properties panel. After selecting the object, I select Quad, then hit Quadriflow Remesh button. Before launching the operation, Blender usually asks you to set up the options. In most cases, I use Preserve Sharp, Preserve Boundary, Smooth Normals, and if I have a symmetrical mesh, I also use Mesh Symmetry. Once I have my remeshed objects, I switch to the next sculpting stage where I start adding more details using the multi-res modifier technique. In this stage, by the way, I usually also model additional small elements. For example, the bag and cover rim. I select the rim area faces in edit mode, duplicate them with shift D and separate them with P, separate selection. Once done, I add the solidify modifier and then apply it. Then I add the multi res modifier to both elements. For the back straps that hold the backpack to the wood structure, I use a similar technique. I duplicate and separate the area and add the solidify and a subsurf modifier to it. Then I extrude and model it in a way that it wraps around the related branch and has a hole for the button I want to add later. Once done, I apply the modifiers and add a multi-res modifier to it. The first details I added to the backpack were the side stitches that basically are made with the draw sharp brush with the follow set to sharper. It's pretty hard to get a uniform result by hand, so in these cases I like to use the curve stroke method. Once done, I decided to draw the leaf shape bumps. These were made with draw brush set to stroke space method with the stabilized stroke enabled, so I could easily draw nice curved shapes with my shaky hands. I have a graphic tablet, so in this case I also enabled the brush pressure sensitivity for the radius and the strength. By the way, if till this moment I used mirror on x-axis, at this point I disable it because I don't want the leaf texture to be symmetrical. Because, you know, there are no symmetrical leaves in nature. Oh. For this fundamental information. Ah, oh, shut up. Getting back to sculpting, for these stitches I used one of the brushes you get for free with the Blender Kit add on. You can download it for free from their website, and they have very useful free stuff like textures, models, brushes, including the one you see me using right now. They also have a paid plan where you can get even more stuff but in this case I just use some free assets. So getting back to stitches, as for the leaf texture, I use it in combination with the stroke stabilize option or line stroke method if I need the stitches to go straight. Once you get to this level of details, it's very hard to change the main shape of your objects without losing any of them. I personally had to face this problem in this case, since after I got some feedbacks, I realized that it would be nice to make the backpack bigger. This meant that the whole part influenced by the rope's pressure required quite big changes. In a case like this, I turn off the auto smooth for the draw brush and use it very carefully with a quite low strength. Once the changes are done, I go to multi res modifier shape options and apply base, so the base mesh will adapt to the changes. For the branch details, I also used brushes, one I got from Blender Kit and the other one from a website called Cube Brush. The creator name is Louis. So thanks, Louis. If you download and use this brush pack, please consider donating to the artist if you can. Oh, 
And I almost forgot about the petrol. I applied a few more subdivisions to this element and then I added the multi res modifier to it with four subdivisions. After that, I masked out the areas that were in contact with the ropes and used the cloth filter set to inflate. I used the blender kit brush to add the stitches on the sides with the curve stroke method and then added a few more wrinkles here and there with the cloth brush set to pinch point. If you use the pinch point, be careful and don't set it up too strong, otherwise it will just go crazy and make your mesh explode. Also, if you see that your computer is slowing down, consider to low down the subdivisions of the multi res modifier. At this point, most elements were done, so I modeled all the objects that should be attached to the sides of the backpack, like the small bottles, the scoop, the rake, the water bottle and the small bags. Regarding uh, this one, once the base mesh was ready, I used the grab brush to adjust the shape a bit and make it more baggy. I already had modeled the compass for another project, so I simply copied it to this file. The blend is a free asset I got from Blender Kit. It's part of the composition Pampas Flower Pot. For the parts that I used to fix these elements to the backpack, I used a similar technique as for the back straps. I selected and separated some parts of the backpack, removed the multi res modifier, added some subdivisions and the solidify modifier. Then I applied the solidify and added a multi res that I subdivided a few times. Then I masked out the parts I wanted to stick to the backpack and adjusted the mesh with the grab brush in a way that it could hold the related object. After that, I used the ply base and the multi res modifier options to make sure that the base mesh adapts properly. I added some stitches with the brush I got from Blender Kit and used a cloth brush to add some cloth wrinkles. Of course, since some of these pieces are similar, like the ones that contained the bottles, I just duplicated them and adjusted the shape with the grab brush a bit. If you are new to sculpting and what I say and do feels really complicated, you might need to learn more about this topic. In this case, the Mastering Sculpting course from CGBoost might be perfect for you. It starts from the basics and brings you to an advanced level with very simple and in-depth lessons where you will learn everything you need about sculpting in Blender. I personally learned many techniques I use on a regular basis from this course, so absolutely recommend it. Thanks to our collaboration, you can have a special 10% discount on all CG Boost courses. For more information, just go to the description below this video. Once done with sculpting and modeling the objects, I added two hair particle systems to the spider. First one for short hairs that I set to 2000 number, 0.004 length and simple children with these values here. Children can help you to give your creature hair a more random look if you increase the radius a bit. I then set up the diameter root to 0.08 and the tip to 0.03. Consider that if you want to preview the result of these changes and the shape of the hairs properly, you must use cycles. That's because in solid shading preview you only see an approximation of the final result and no changes in hair shape width. For the second hair system, I set a lower value for number and longer length. I enabled simple for children with amount of 20, radius set to 0036 and roundness set to 0.772. In this case, I also used clumping to give the impression of slight hair tufts. I then set up the kink type to curl and decreased the amplitude and increased the frequency. I used the particle edit to remove some hairs that were passing through the eyes. Once I was done with the spider, I UV mapped and unwrapped most models. When I know that I have no intention to bring an object outside Blender, I unwrap only the parts I think are really necessary, so I don't waste my time. Here, unfortunately, I had to unwrap most of them, except the spider, the glass parts of the bottles, the upper part of the shovel, the rake and the scoop. 
Oh, and the small parts holding all these objects. I actually most time mix the unwrapping stage with texturing. Many times I first try to add the material to the objects and check out if they look good with generated mapping. If the answer is no, I just do the UVs. Most textures here I took from Blender Kit, except for the rope that I got from ambientcg.com. I love Multiress modifier because you can bake normals and displacement from it and use the low poly version of your meshes to optimize the render files. You can also use the black and white displacement map to add some color variations to the object that will give more believability to the normal map effect. In this case, I did so with stitches. I used the displacement that I plugged into a color ramp with two different colors. This combined with the normal map contributed to make them feel more real. Of course, sometimes the map isn't perfect, but you can fix that with a few brush strokes that is a lot quicker than painting a mask by hand from scratch. I use the similar technique to add a slight red shade to the leaf texture as well. I use the bump map as mask to combine two different textures, one greenish and one reddish. The lighting I use for my projects is a simple three point light system, where I usually have one strong light from one side, a second weaker light from the opposite side and a rim light behind my object. I frequently set it up before I start the texturing process so I can immediately see how it will look like with the lighting I will use for the final rendering. Once everything was done, I parented all the objects to an empty so I could rotate them all together easily and make a turnaround and a few renderings from different angles. So this was my process for this fantasy backpack. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. I would love to know what you think about it. So if you like, leave a comment below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Goodbye.